There's a new best coding model in the world, and unsurprisingly, this is Claude Sonnet 4.5. So based on their previous models, I actually trust this claim a little bit. But here's something really cool. Claude Code got some major upgrades too, like a proper VS Code integration, so you can get a Copilot and Cursor-like experience with Claude Code. There's a new SDK, new API tools, and there's also a new research preview called Imagine with Claude that looks pretty fun. So without wasting any more time, let's jump in and see what Anthropic just released. We'll start out with the new model, Claude Sonnet 4.5. This is already available, and Anthropic describe it as the best coding model in the world. It's the strongest model for building complex agents it's the best model at using computers, and it shows substantial gains in reasoning and math. So Anthropic are very confident about this model. I ran a comparison on a simple single prompt, comparing it to GPT-5 Codex and Sonnet 4, but pretty much all of these models are very good at simple tasks now. You can see that 4.5 gives me a very nice UI, it is a working game, and it has some nice towers at the bottom. GPT-5 gave me a working game with that classic AI gradient style, and Sonnet 4 probably does look the worst, but again, this all works. So while I think 4.5 Sonnet does win in that example, it's getting pretty hard to showcase the differences in performance of these models besides just showing you the benchmarks and telling you to spend some time with them. I did try a more complex example where we have a back end and a front end, and this is the prompt that I used to create a personal finance dashboard. I used open code for all of these so we didn't have any differences in Claude code versus Codex, and I also had the same starting point where I had a React router app with a Hono back end, Drizzle, and SQLite database. This is the result I got back from Sonnet 4.5. You can see we do have a finance dashboard. We have a nice overview at the top. These cards do look pretty good. We have the account section, some financial goals, and then also the recent transaction. So it's done everything that I asked for in my prompt. Now it did all of this based on that single prompt. I never had to go back to it with any issues. Everything was just working after that initial prompt. You can see down here, we can go ahead and delete some of these transactions and the data is actually updating. And if I refresh the page, everything stays the same as it is using my database and my backend server. I've checked the code, it definitely is doing that. Everything's working, so we can add a transaction here. If I say emergency fund, I'll just add in some money. I'll just say we got a refund from something and maybe categorize this as food. Click add transaction. And down here, we can see that transaction is immediately showing up in the recent transactions list. We can delete our financial goals and also add them as well. So I say it's done a pretty good job. This UI isn't perfect, but it's definitely not bad. Switching over to the result of GPT-5, now this was the only model where I had to send multiple follow-up prompts to to even get something to show up on screen. It seemed to have some issues around creating the seed data at first, then it had some front-end issues with the toast, some back-end issues with the Zod import, then some TRPC and TANSTAT query issues. But finally, after pasting in the error messages into GPT-5 a few times, we did get something that we can actually see. So we have a nice financial overview here, we have our accounts section and the recent activity. Now I would say I almost prefer the UI style that this was going for but it definitely didn't nail it and we can also see down here there are some issues where there's a bit of overflow in our select boxes and I would note that this doesn't actually work there appears to be an issue with getting this to work and actually updating the values on the server I only gave it the errors up until we could actually see something on screen so I'd need to go back and reprompt it to fix all of those backend issues the final comparison was against Claude Sonnet 4 and you can see here it does look pretty similar to the one that Sonnet 4.5 gave us but 4.5 definitely looked a little bit better and had a few upgrades again it pretty much has all of the same information although I do notice there seems to be no way that we can actually delete our recent transactions but we do have our categories financial goals and we are able to add and create them and again if I try out the transactions here and actually select some of the types and just put in some information it does actually add these transactions and once we refresh we can see them here so a tiny bit of an issue there where it's not updating the second that I click the button but again it is all working and this again worked from a single prompt I had no errors where I had to go back and tell it to fix it so to me, Sonnet 4.5 is definitely the winner there as it nailed it in the single prompt and I do think it looked the best. Although I would say it's not a major upgrade when it comes to UI. I have seen other models like Grok perform a little bit better on UI. As I said, play around with the models for yourself and see which one works best on your project. But if you are curious about the benchmarks, I'll quickly go through those and then we can talk about Claude Code. First, I want to give a huge shout out to Anthropic for actually including other provider models in their benchmarks. It shows they're confident and also they're honest. For SWE Bench, you can see that it is at the top, but something crazy about this one is they actually observed that it could work for 30 hours on a multi-step task. That is absolutely insane, but I'd also hate to see the bill for that because, spoiler alert, the price has not changed. 
For the remaining benchmarks for OS World, there has been a big leap. This actually tests the AI on real world computer tasks. There's a big leap compared to four in agentic terminal coding as well. And we can see for AIME, which is the math benchmark, it scored 100% when given tools. There's also a few more benchmarks for non-coding like finance, law, and STEM, but the TLDR is it beats them all on that as well. What is super cool though is this is also their most aligned model. This means it has reduced concerning behaviors like sycophancy, deception, power seeking, and the tendency to encourage delusional thinking. Definitely not scary at all to think about all of that. But it does also mean it is less susceptible to prompt injection attacks as well, although I'm pretty sure we'll see one of them pretty soon. Something we can see now though is the major Claude code upgrades. Starting out with the big one, it now has a native VS Code extension. So we have our chat interface here like we get from Copilot and Cursor, but obviously this one is powered by Claude code. That means we can do similar slash commands that we can with Claude code as it's powered by it under the hood. We can change our mode down here to ask before edits, to edit automatically to plan mode, and then we'll leave that back on ask before edits. But what it also has is knowledge of the editor. So if I select some text over here, you can see it shows us we have one line selected and it will also know the file that you're looking at. That means that I can now say rename this to be your finances and hopefully it should just change that line of text. And there we go, it did just that. And as you can see, this is the UI that it shows us for making some edits. We have our buttons up the top where we can see the different edits that it would have made. In this case, it was a very simple one. We can approve it from here or we can also go ahead and approve it down here. I'll click yes on that. And there we go, the change is done. The terminal interface itself also got a redesign. And as you can see, we now have a version bump to Claude Code 2.0. And alongside that, we also got a checkpoint feature. So now I don't need to remember to git commit everything when I make a change with Claude Code. It now automatically has checkpoints. All I need to do after sending in a few prompts is either use the command slash rewind, or we can go ahead and tap escape twice. As you can see, you can choose a point where you want to restore and fork the conversation to the point before that prompt. So if I now go back to the add a new about page, everything has changed back to my initial prompt and it's rewound everything for me. The other new feature that Claude Code got was searchable prompt history. All you need to do is tap control R and now we can search through our prompts. It just makes it a lot easier to find and reuse your previous prompts. You can see here I typed in about and we're seeing the previous prompt that I had that had the word about in it. There's still more announcements. There were some updates to that Chrome extension, but personally, I'm not on the waitlist for that. And to be honest with you, not ready for an AI browser. So let's just jump straight to that research preview called Imagine with Claude. The idea here is that it generates software on the fly. None of the functionality is pre-written and no code is pre-written. Unfortunately, this is only available to Claude Max users, but some cool examples I saw on Twitter was a build your own adventure game, where as I said, each step is being generated on the fly here. And in that demo, you can see when they click around on the software that none of it is written yet. It just takes a little bit of time and then it writes the functionality for your next click. So then after a while, when you do click around, that functionality will be there. It's just a very cool research preview into what the future of generating UI could look like. The final few announcements are really cool if you use the Claude API. First, there's now context editing, so it automatically clears stale tool calls and results from within the context window when you approach the token limit. The idea is that this can extend how long agents can actually run for without manual intervention, and it actually increases the effective model performance as Claude is only focusing on the relevant context. There's also a new memory tool. This actually allows Claude to store and consult information outside of its context window through a file-based system. So it can create, read, update, and delete files in a dedicated memory directory that you store on your infrastructure, and that persists across conversations. So it allows these agents to build up knowledge bases over time, maintain project state across sessions, and reference previous learnings without having to keep everything in its context. So these two features should really help you build better agents that can go on for longer, like that 30 hours that we we saw earlier. And there's also a new SDK that goes alongside all of this, and it's called the Claude Agent SDK. This was actually renamed from the Claude Code SDK, and we recently covered this in a recent video. So go ahead and check out Richard's video if you want to learn a load more about the Agent SDK. There we go. That's the drop by Anthropic. Now, I'm pretty happy I didn't have to sit through a live stream to get to all of this information, and that they also know how to make graphs properly. No shade to any company in particular. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments down below. While you're there, subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.